What's up? It's Roy Wood Jr. Time for another episode of Stand Up Playback. I'm taking the stars of comedy today and we're digging in the vault and finding old clips of them from God knows how long ago, helping me do that. This week, this gentleman just had a had a one man show on Broadway. That's when your stand up elevates. <laughs> one man show status. And then one man show status on Broadway. He is my good friend and stand up comedy veteran, Mr. Mike Berbiglia. How the hell are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm glad to be here. I'm dreading watching this old footage. We This is like looking at photos of yourself from high school. <laughs> yeah, we are all awkward. It's basically comedy puberty. Maybe that's what we should have called this <laughs> show. First and foremost, Quarantine, uh, your uh, new special on Netflix, the new one, Yep. Uh, details the birth of your child. That's right. And now you're quarantined with this child. And I'm quarantined with a child. And, How is uh, that she's, going? She's five. And... Uh, we were doing a lot of arts and crafts, and the other day, Una painted on the wall like it was a canvas. And then the first thing my wife said was, that was when you were in charge. And I was, I, I had no defense. I had no defense. Oh, God. Y'all are both <laughs> terrible prison guards. <laughs> so in the spirit of fairness, what I try to do, Mike, is roll a clip of myself first. Okay. I get so it. So that you can decimate me. Okay. And then we'll roll in some of your goldie oldies from back in the day, all right? So let's, do it. let's go into my first clip. This is from a Comedy Central contest called the Laugh Riots that they used to do. Back in the days, kids, you sent in a VHS tape. VHS tape. That's how you got on TV. You mailed a VHS tape to a white person in New York. And if they liked you enough, you got to show up in Atlanta, and this is what happened in the year 2000. This is back in my suit wearing days. Daddy yeah, was cheap, y'all. Daddy bought my first car, decent car, 87 Dodge Aries, y'all. Zero to 60 in four miles. <laughs> Listen to all the raggedy car people ready to do all this, man. If you got a raggedy car, that's fine. Don't be embarrassed or be ashamed oh, about man. it, man. Got... The true sign of being an amateur in comedy is wearing your lanyard on stage. Oh my God, that's great point. For the uneducated in the in the festival universe, the lanyard is the thing you're wearing around your neck, which is how you get in backstage. But if you're wearing it on stage, it means you don't really even belong on stage. I was I was done before I walked out on stage. I know the judges were like, he's wearing his damn lanyard. Let's keep rolling, but I want you to pay close attention to my belt line. See if you can see the suspenders that go with this suit. I'm dressed like an 80 year old. But if you got a raggedy car, you ain't allowed to decorate that damn car, right? <laughs> I got think of people in raggedy cars decorating them. And they get creative. You know who the most creative people are on this earth, y'all? The duct tape plastic people. <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about? They got the window knocked out of their car four years ago, but they used the insurance money to buy a TV. <laughs> So what they do, they put a clear piece of plastic on the window and wrap it up in duct tape so no one get in the car. I had one friend, y'all, cut a hole in the plastic so he could get food and drive through. <laughs> if you ain't got no windows, you, can, you have to go inside. That, that's it. I had one friend, y'all, took his whole back window out, laid down one layer of clear plastic, laid down a black trash bag. Other than that, what the hell are you making? He said tinted windows. I'm done. All right, that's enough. That tinted windows punchline is strong. Yeah, I... I... I, I more so hate the suit. This was bad. The problem that I had in those days was this. I had to wear suits to look older so that people would take me seriously. Yes, I, that's a really good point. I was scrawny. I was 6'2". I'm probably 6'2", 170 in that picture. I'm like 240 now. No one wants to listen to comedy from a little scrawny kid. Yeah, what they want to listen to comedy from is a fucking youth pastor <laughs> wearing his lanyard <laughs> on stage. And by so, the way... Sorry to ding you on this, but also the drink. Oh, that was that was my Steve Harvey swag. I stole yeah, that yeah. from all the black comics on Comic View. But you know what's des the desperation of you holding a glass here is you're only on stage for five minutes. You really need a drink in your five minutes that you're on stage. Come on. Yes, yes, bitch, I did because I was nervous, <laughs> and that's my crutch. We'll get into performance crutches later. Let's let's jump into one of your goldie oldies. This is from 2001. Comedy Central Premium Blend, which is the comedy showcase. I already... you know, live at Gotham, live at yeah. the Cellars, what we do now. But this was that version of that show. This is 19 oh years gosh. ago. All right, before we even play it, what what's going on with the polo? Because that's not how you dress now. Like, you're much more 
dad, sometimes you do a hoodie, sometimes you do a jacket. I've seen all of your various hour specials and none of them did you ever. Sometimes when uh, I do the, the, uh, the fundraising show that you and I uh, created on Instagram Live, tip your weight staff, uh, the commenters will say that I have, quote, big dad energy, which is like, I, that's a big comment. That's a big comment. And that's, I think, you know, I'm wearing the sweater. I'm wearing the big blue sweater. Uh, if you do, and you could do this in post, if you do a side by side of me now, like I'll do the pose like, like this. And you do that. Oh, and it's just, it's night and day. For starters, chest hair you can see it some chest hair coming out of the shirt is that your sex symbol years you i like think it was a sex to... symbol it was a, it was a attempt at sex symbol years as a failed attempt and uh and also short sleeves get them out of comedy short sleeves don't belong <laughs> in comedy i think there's a certain persona that can pull it off but i have, i have a strict no shorts policy no short with the exception with the no exception shorts. of gabriel iglesias because he's always done it and that's yeah. his thing Yep. And he's funny enough to pull it off. Plus, he's he's good times. And shorts are for good times. It matches his persona. This is Michael right. Biglia, 2001 uh, Premium Blend. Yeah. Wow, I like that love. I'm a pretty sensitive guy. I am. Yeah, I was on the subway the other day, and the guy next to me was crying over a book. He was actually crying. So I leaned over. I go, you don't know how to read either, huh? Nice. Nice. He was like, uh-uh. That still stands up. I shouldn't say bad stuff about illiterate people, though. I should write it. <laughs> Yo! That one still stands up for Biggs? Yeah, yeah. The joke stands up. The joke stands up. The delivery is fraudulent and fake and nothing like how I speak. Are you serious? You wouldn't perform that joke the same way now. No, it would be completely different. I, I would say, I, the other day I was on the subway and there was a guy next to me, because a true premise, by the way, really happened when I moved to New York. There's a guy next to me crying over a book. He's actually crying. I leaned over and I go, you don't know how to read either, huh? And uh, I shouldn't say that. I said, I didn't make jokes about illiterate people. I shouldn't tell jokes about illiterate people. I should, I should write it. Uh, and so it would be an undersell. My current sell of that same joke would be an undersell, but... The joke, you're right. The joke itself, I'm good with it. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know. There might be people in the illiterate community that may say, you know, <laughs> you disrespect and try to cancel you. But it, the joke still stands out. Give me a little bit more of this because we got one more of you that I want to watch. By the way, hold on. One more, one more pause. Tucked in shirt. Get it out of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> really? No more tucks. Okay. Keep going. Braided belt still stands up. So I got a girlfriend. Thank you. Yeah. She's a, little, yeah, she's a little bit older than I am, so she's starting to get to that age where she's thinking about having kids, you know, which is exciting, because we're going to have to break up. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's just I've, just I've decided I'm not going to have kids until I'm absolutely sure that nothing else good can happen in my life. Why are you not a no? That was the first joke that having, I'm not going to have kids until I'm sure nothing else good can happen in my life. I wrote that when I was 19 years old. It was the first joke I ever wrote that was autobiographical and, um, and, and a confession, which is what I do now. All of what I do now is confessional comedy, admitting something to the audience you don't want to admit. And that was the first time I did it and it worked. I mean, in this, in this I'm like 23 or whatever, but when I wrote it, I was, I was 19. And, uh, and so, yeah, I think that joke holds up. I, I'm cringing at the delivery because I'm so like, I'm so like wide eyed and it's just so like That's what I, comedy was 20 years ago. It was yeah. much more chipper. It was See, more energy. There was more energy. Yours yours comedy. is similar too. Yours is like yours your you speak much faster in your clip than yeah. you speak now. Yeah. I I don't care now. I can like slow down a little bit. I know that I know that this might be funny, but in those early days you're always talking faster. So then let's jump ahead to 2006. This is you more polished now because this is your Comedy <laughs> Central half hour special. Now, let's just start with the set design. That's an Arctic <laughs> fox or is that a wolf? It's an Arctic fox. Okay. What does that represent? Because for, for the people who don't know, 
when you're a comedian and you get a half hour or an hour special, the, the network and the producers come to you. So what do you want to put on the stage? What speaks to you? Yeah. And you replied, Arctic Fox. Why? I had a joke that was a signature joke, which is I said to my girlfriend, what do you fear most? And she said, I fear you're going to leave me and I'm going to be all alone. And she said, what do you fear most? And I said, bears. I was really into wildlife at the time. And I just thought of myself as being this sort of wildlife focused comedian. So yeah, I'm just going to be the animal comic. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, also the guitar. Let's see what happens with the guitar. You don't play the guitar as much on stage anymore. We can get into that after we see you play this guitar. <laughs> I, uh, I, I just started playing guitar this year. And uh, I just, you know, I had a lot of, hey, so I, you know a lot of time to kill in hotels. And so uh, I'm just a beginner, so I'm not very good, but I love music. Like sometimes when I'm driving- uh, Let's pause uh, real quick. We've got the hoodie, no more short sleeves. Your shit ain't tucked in. I respect the evolution. Yeah, there's an evolution. I respect it, let's keep rolling. Listen to the radio for hours, you know, and I'll, I'll listen to Christian rock uh, by mistake, uh, <laughs> because it always starts out as like a Bon Jovi ballad, you know? <laughs> It'll be like, I woke up in the morning and I got myself some oatmeal and I put some raisins on it and Christ is God. Christ is God. God, God, God. God, God, God. Oh, that's great. All right, pause it, pause it right there. So, as you became more biographical, I'm going to guess why you quit playing the guitar on stage. You tell me how close I am. Okay. More often than not, guitar-based material, you have to write an original song. The original song usually is about observations. Most guys that are music acts on stage are observational. They're not introspective. And as your comedy evolved and became more introspective, you can't express the intricacies of what's going on inside your heart through music because that's too complicated of a joke writing process. Yes, and building on what you're saying, it, kind of. I my skill level as a guitarist had a ceiling. But you don't you don't think that just by sticking with it, like eventually there would have been some level of skills because you don't have to be fucking Bon Jovi on a guitar. You just need to be the best comedic guitarist. If you go to a show, you go to a good show and a guy goes, pulls out a guitar, and you're better than that person at guitar, you're like, how come I bought a ticket to this? <laughs> okay, fair point, fair point. Uh, do we have a little bit more of Mike on this guitar? I, uh, I love playing guitar, but I think there's a, like a danger uh, in playing guitar too much. Truism, truism. Uh, like there's always that guy who just shows up at the party That's you're funny. at and just starts That's playing real. guitar for no reason. This and is you're my like, friend Chris Fosnick in college is based on it. There, everyone knows his motivation for doing it. And so I wrote a song this year just for that guy. <laughs> and, uh, guitar guy at the party. It's called Guitar Guy at the Party. <laughs> I'm the guitar guy at the party. I'm the guitar guy and I think I'll drink a Coke in the Cardi. It might seem like I'm just having fun, but I'm actually not. I'm trying to sleep with your girlfriend. Listen to me as I play this song, because I'm going to play it regardless. Good use of regardless. I'm only playing three chords, so I can make eye contact. Different women in the room. I'm gonna try and sleep with your girlfriend. I feel like this. Pause, pause it. Wait, I have one. Wait, hold on one second because I have something. All right, keep going, keep going. One more second. You know, I think your boyfriend really takes you for granted. When was the last time he told you that your eyes look like space crystals? If you want to come on my place, that would be cool. It's not gonna be like last time. All right, stop it there. Stop uh, it there. All right. Space crystals. Your eyes look like space. Space crystals. crystals. John Mulaney wrote that. Really? He just yeah. gave you that tag. Yeah, because we were on tour. This is the Media Man on Campus tour for Comedy Central. This is a college tour. We were on a tour bus. This was like I think 2005, 2006. We were like living on a bus together. And you know when you're 
when you're with another comic, there's a lot of cross pollination. What about this? What about this tag? What about this tag? What about this tag? And that was his line. He was like, what about something like your eyes look like space crystals? I was like, that's funny as hell. And I put it in and it exploded. It was like the, I think it's the best line in the song. On that song, not as a whole, but on that song, some Sandler vibes, because people forget Adam Sandler. You're right. I love Sandler. Sandler would pick up. It was in the it was in the octaves. Guitar guy no, at right. the party, like really dope, man. Before we wrap, man, let me tell you, thank you for just having the initiative to start TipYourWeightStaff.com. And Thanks, man. for the people who haven't gone to this website, it's a collection of GoFundMe's where we are supporting the weight and bar staff of all of the various comedy clubs across the country. Go there. If you see your club in the city that you support listed, send some money those people's way. Even if you can't, send the link to somebody who can. Like So we came up with Tip Your Weight Staff. It was your name that you came up with. And I do most I, I do most of these sort of Instagram live. If you go on my at for bigs handle, I do a few a week. And we hit a milestone this week we link to 45 different club campaigns and that number has been is over half a million dollars raised from 7,000 different donors. I wish I could clap faster, man. That's Isn't that cool? Yeah, dude, over half a mil. Um, I can't thank you enough for kicking back with a little bit of playback with me. Um, do so you fun. own any of these old clothes that you performed in? Hell no. You Hell still no. have that hoodie? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't even have the guitar. The guitar <laughs> got crushed in an airplane baggage claim once. I saw it through my window, like, get smushed, and it, it's got cracked straight through it. And so that was the day God told you to start writing about yourself. That's right. I think that's what it was, man. Well, look, man, thank you so much for coming on. He is Mike Babiglia, the specialist, the new one. New one. I got a book. There's a, there's a the new one book coming out June... 16th for Father's Day, which is it's a great Father's Day gift. And uh, so, so yeah, check that out too. Somebody's keeping busy during quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Must be nice. Yeah, must All right. Thanks, nice. Mike. Thanks, Ray.